In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an appointment booking website with WordPress. Now, this is not going to be a video where I'm going to show you how to use Calendly or Cal.com or similar third-party calendar software and just copy them or integrate them in WordPress. Those solutions can work, but I'm going to show you how to make a solution that is just WordPress native. So everything will be done in WordPress. So let's get started with the video. Let me show you or let me switch to my screen. So I'll show you how to actually achieve this. So this is the WordPress website we are working with. It's a blank website, nothing too much. I've installed some basic plugins. And of course, we're going to use a plugin for achieving this. And the plugin is called Amelia. So let me show you how to install the plugin first. It has a free version and a premium version as well. As well. I'll leave the links in the description. So we'll go to plugins and we'll go to add plugin. And we'll search for the plugin and it's called Amelia. And I'll just zoom in on the screen so you can see what I'm typing. Amelia is the name of the plugin. And once it's searched, you can see this is the icon of the plugin. Uh, it's very uh, popular plugin for appointment bookings. So we'll install this plugin now. So the plugin is installed and activated. And before we start using the plugin or creating some events or something like that, we'll go into the settings first. So hover over Amelia here and let's go into the settings. And you can see there are a lot of different settings. Now, all of these settings might not be available in the free version. I'm going to go through some of the important ones that you should configure. So let's go into the company settings first. And inside, what we should be doing is uh, adding your own company logo and adding a name, address, and website. So let me quickly do that. So I'll fill this with basic information. Of course, it's a dummy information. Let me save this now. And the company is set up. Let's also check out notifications. So notifications are for basically when people actually sign up, they should be notified. So we have to set this up. Now do make, make sure that you are using an SMTP service. It's grayed out because I have not installed an SMTP service. I'll leave links in the description of this video where I'll show you how to set up an SMTP server or SMTP service on your website so the website can set up, send out emails. If you're using PHP mail, it's unreliable and emails might not go out. So what you have to do is just make sure that the sender name, the sender email, and the email configuration is done correctly so that your users are automatically redirected and when they cancel events, they can be redirected to the right pages. That's all we have to do here. I'll click cancel for now. And we'll also go through provider details, but we have to set other things first and then we can come back to provider details. Let's go to payments as well. So the payments, we can change a few things in the free version. We can change the currency before symbol, after symbol, or where, the, where you want to place the currency symbol, number of decimals, comma dots, and some other details. And you can also add a custom currency symbol if you like. But the other options, which is having a cart, coupons, payment links, uh, taxation, and other things are not available in the free version. If you want to collect payments directly on site, then you'll need to upgrade. And by the way, the default payment method is on site. That means uh, people can book, they'll be revealed the price, but they can visit the actual location and pay basically in person. So that's the default available with the free version. If you want to use any other payment methods, you can upgrade to the paid version. I'll click cancel for now. And then some other settings as well, which we can ignore for now. The provider details are something we have to configure, but before that we need to do a couple of things. So we'll get started with that. What we'll do is go to the services section and create new services. Now, what are services? So as a dental clinic, let's say, for example, you provide certain services. As a hair salon, you might provide the certain services. So we'll be creating a category and other services here. So let's just do it here. So I'll add a category here. And I'll just do cleaning. And you can also add an image for the category. So I'll just skip it that for now. I'll just create the category here. So now we have a category ready. We can add some services inside the category. So let's click the add service button here. And we can fill out certain information here. So name, category, and there's some other things which we cannot do in the free version. And also add a description here. We also have a duration and pricing. So how much time will it take? Let's say basic service takes one hour. So you can specify that here, what the price is. Some images you can add if you want to showcase what the service looks like. Some extras, which is not available here. And some other settings, which are also not available. So let me fill out and create a couple of services. Then we'll move ahead with the next section of the video. So now you can see I've created a total of two different categories and four different services. So one is a dental cleaning service, which includes basic cleaning and some teeth whitening services. And there's orthodontics, which has braces consulting and invisible aligners consult. So now that you've created these services, we'll create some employees that can manage or do these services. So let me show you how to do that. For that, we'll need to create a new user in WordPress. So we'll head to the user section and we'll click add new user or add user here. And this will take us to this interface where we can create a new user. So let me quickly fill this out. So I filled out the information with dummy information. There's a password pre-created as well. The most important part, what we have to do is change the role here. 
So depending on the plugins you have on your site, you might have different roles. But once you add and install Amelia, it adds some new roles to uh, this option here. So if you click on it, you'll see you have Amelia customer, Amelia employee and manager. So if you want people to manage your services or be provide your services, then you will create a new user as Amelia employee. So for example, let's say if you're running a hair salon, you might have four or five employees that actually do the service and every employee might have different services that they might be able to provide. So that's what we are uh, setting up here. And do keep in mind that the free version of Amelia is limited to one employee. So if you want more employees to be added, you need to upgrade to the pro version. Once again, the links will be in the description that you can utilize. So once you've done this, and let's save this so that a new user will be created, then we can go back into settings and configure what employees can do, what kinds of services, all right? So let's save this and go there. So I've saved the information and the user is now created. You can see it here, there's the user here. Now let's, let's back to uh, Emilia here and inside the settings, we'll configure some options. So let's head back to settings here. And inside the settings, we'll go to provider details. This is where we configure which employees can do what kinds of services and also create appointment or I say set in, setting up things or basic on appointments and timings. So let's click provider details here. And this is where we'll configure a lot of things. So first of all, what you can do is uh, you can select a WordPress user directly. Now you can do this without setting up a WordPress user, but the benefit of that is that if you set them up as a WordPress user, they can log in and check what kind of appointments they have by themselves. So that gives them more control. So I'd recommend using this method. So you can use the demo here and everything else should be set up. You can add the first name. So I'll just do that quickly. So I've added some basic information about the user. You can also upload a profile picture and you have some time zone and badges and other features in the premium version and also add descriptions and internal notes if you want to. More importantly, you have to go into the assigned services section and this is where you can assign that this is what they do and also customize some pricing. So let's say the employee is not authorized, for example, a dental, I, I don't know how it works, but I'm assuming that uh, the actual doctor is the one who provides the orthodontics consulting and the basic cleaning and everything else can be done by employees. So you can set it up here. You can see how many spots and pricing and change things. And importantly, you can go here in the work hours section and you can define what days they work on. So you can set them and customize the timing as well. Go here that, hey, they'd work from nine to five and what services they assign at what times. You can completely customize everything. You can also set up days off, what days they have off. So this can be all done in advance. So users see up-to-date information when they're setting up their, their services. You can also do special days. So that's also important. I'm gonna leave it at the default settings here, but all of these are possible to do. Once you're happy, let's click save. And now provider details are also done. Now we have to go and actually create the forms or these onboarding or the appointment booking system, which users can add directly see on the website. For that, we'll go to the customize section here. Let's click on this. And now we can see the customization options. There are a few different options here. We'll use the step-by-step -step booking form, which will allow users to pick a service and pick the time slots available. It's a more guided process. So let's click continue here. And now we have the basic setup form where we can customize some things. Now, let me just go through the settings first. So first of all, you can go into the global settings and change fonts and colors. So if you want to change the fonts and colors here, let me give a demonstration. If I go to the colors and I can change colors for basically everything here. So if I go to the sidebar and if I click the background color option, I can change the U to let's say something nice purple. So let's just do something like this and I'll click okay. And instantly you start seeing those changes here. So similarly, you can change the color for everything else and also the font and typography options. So that's the global settings. Then you also have section settings, so you can set up here. But most importantly, what you should be remembering is every step of the process has different set of settings here, which you can access by going here. Let's go to sidebar first. So if you go to sidebar, you can see you have options about what fields to display. So if you uh, display or you can uh, disable the visibility to the sidebar itself like this, you can disable the heading if you like, heading here. You can change or display or remove the phone number field if you want to and email field as well. So depending on how you want to have this configured, you can enable or disable these options. And you also can change the labels here. So you can see inside the labels, if you go here, the default label is something else. You can change it. On the footer, you have the get in touch button. So get in touch is here. You can change this label and you have also default menu labels. So every menu item you see here, so for example, you can say uh, hide bar. So you can change the labels here and this will be a, a, a basically change in real time, and then this will be customized on the main uh, form here. Let's go back here. And now what we can do is we can see the similar settings for each of the steps. So you can see this is the server selection step. So if I click here, we can see again the options. So you can change the buttons around and you can change the labels around. And the settings for all these steps will be exactly the same. 
So if you want to navigate those different steps and how they look like, you just have to click here. So right now we are in the service selection step. So users will be able to select that, hey, which service they want to use. So you can see these are some demo services that are showing up here. So we can see the experience, what it will like. Then we go into the date and time selection. So if you click here, we will automatically go to the next field. And now users can see, hey, this is the calendar spots or these are spots available. They can click on it. And then this time slots will be available. So depending on how you've configured this and what service users choose, this is something they can access here. And then click the continue button. So just giving a demonstration, we'll, I'll show you how this sets up on the website. Then you can do this the same for, for custom information. So you can see, you can change the order, options, and labels again. And this is the experience. If we go back and we go to payment summary. So now which service we have selected, what's the total and here. And since we have just used the free version of the plugin, you can see the payment will be done on site. And we can also go back and see the congratulations, which is the final page, where you will see all this information about everything else. And also they can add this to their calendar. So this is the basic setup process. As I said, uh, and demonstrated, you can change labels around, change colors. Let's publish this here. And now the settings have been updated. So how do we actually add this to our website? Let me show you. For this, I'll create a new page. You can also create a new post. So if I go to pages and I add new page, let's open this in a new tab. I'll name the page uh, appointment booking or book an appointment. And here we'll use the custom block that uh, Amelia has added. So I'll just type forward slash A-M-E. And you can see there are different kinds of custom blocks available. Since we use the step-by-step -step booking process, we'll just add it here and we'll publish this page. The page is live. Let's open it up a new tab. And now we can see the page is now live. So we can go here and we can see what kind of services are available. Since we've just added one employee that does only cleaning services, we don't see the orthodontic services. We can enable that and those services will be available as well. If we, let's say, go for teeth whitening, now we have a data time option. We can click continue. I'll select 25th. Let's say I am happy with 12 to 2 p.m. Let's click continue. I can add my information here, which I'll blur out a little bit. It's already filled in since I'm logged in. I can add my phone number as well. I'll click continue. And now I can see the summary and everything else. And I can click continue once again. And now I can see the congratulations page. Everything else is shown up here. I'll blur out my email, of course. So that's how easy it is to set up an appointment booking website on your WordPress website. Once again, if you're looking to create event calendars, this might not be the best plugin. Sugar Calendar is a better plugin for that. I'll leave a link again in the description to the video that I've done on how to create event calendars. And do check out Amelia. The plugin is linked in the description, the free version and the premium version as well. And if you have any ideas that you want us to make videos about on using WordPress, creating website with WordPress, the comment box is open. Otherwise, you can like, share, subscribe to this channel. Do I think all that good stuff. And you're watching Yuvraj from Double Beginner. I'll catch you in the next video really, really, really soon. Take care.